Easter is just around the corner, and if you are a teacher, you're probably looking for some ways to keep your little students engaged through another sugar-filled holiday. So why not incorporate some simple math activities into your day by using plastic Easter eggs? You guys, I got this giant bag at Walmart for around $2. You can grab them at your local dollar store. And so in this video, I'm actually gonna share five simple games that your students are going to love and stick with me until the end because I have a really fun freebie for you too. So if you're ready, hit that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up and let's dive in and get started. So first up is my favorite because it's so versatile and that is task cards. We all have them lying around our classroom. We probably have them for multiple concept areas. So these are perfect for doing a egg hunt in your classroom. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take a task card and you are gonna fold it up really small so that it fits nicely inside of an Easter egg just like this. And so then what you can do is you can have a simple recording sheet like the one I am going to share how you can grab this one for free. So stick with me until the end of the video. Or you can have students write in their math journal whatever you would like for them to do. And then what you're going to have them do, you're going to hide these eggs all over your classroom in various spots around the room. They have to go and they have to find an Easter egg. And so for example, in this one, they're gonna crack the egg, they're gonna open up the task card. And so this is problem number one and it tells them to write the time. So on their recording sheet or in their math journal, they are gonna write number one and then they are going to look at this analog clock and they will write the digital time in the matching box. Super simple, super fun and engaging. Now, what you can also do is I wanna show you how you can use and do a class egg hunt using any set of task cards that you already have, but they might come in a larger size than this. So like this one, for example, it's already cut down to a smaller size. So I wanna show you how you can print any set of task cards out in a smaller size so they'll be per the perfect size to fit inside of an Easter egg. Okay, so what you want to do is pull up a PDF version of any set of task cards that you have. So this is just a, a random set that I have. This is found in my second grade place value unit. And I am actually going to scroll down and I'm gonna use the black and white version instead of the colored version. So let me scroll down here. And what I wanna do, or what you want to do, is you want to select all of the cards that you want to use. And so to do this, I am on a Mac, so I am pressing Command, and then just holding that down and clicking on the thumbnails. I'm sure there is a similar way you can do it on a PC. Then from there, you're gonna go up to File, and click print. And what you want to do is, oh, I have one of the colored selected. I am going to take that out. And typically you would have it set under your print settings. You would have it just set to a normal size. If you go to where it says print multiple and you can choose to print two on a page, since I'm printing four pages, you can actually print all four sets of task cards on one page and they come out the perfect size. So let me show you what they look like. So here I printed all 16 task cards. So that was four pages. I printed four to one page. So it printed them small enough to where they're the perfect size that when you fold them up, they will fit inside of an Easter egg. And so that way you're not having to worry about trying to like recreate something. And so you can easily do this with any set of task cards that you have. Now I want you to notice that in this particular set of task cards, they're not labeled by numbers. 
they are labeled with letters. So A, B, C, D, and so on. So inside of the free download that I'm gonna show you how to grab, you're also gonna get a blank generic recording sheet. You're gonna get one with numbers and then you're gonna get a set that the boxes are labeled with letters as well so that you can use this for any set of task cards that you have. And in this free download, you're gonna get a set with that includes 20 boxes and 16 boxes. Number two that I'm going to show you is a, another fun favorite, and I just call this money eggs. Maybe you can come up with a better idea for it. But for this, all you need is a simple recording sheet, just like the generic one that I'm gonna show you how to grab. And then inside of the Easter eggs, so each one you are going to want to label. So whether you're using numbers or letters, whichever you're gonna want, you're gonna wanna label them on the outside. So with this one, I have the letter A on the outside, so I need a recording sheet that has letters and not numbers. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take some Easter eggs and on the inside, you are going to fill the Easter eggs with a set of coins. And this is so easy to differentiate depending on the level of your students. You can use just pennies and nickels. You can use nickels, dimes, and pennies. You can throw in quarters. You can throw in dollars, half dollars, whatever you would like. It's going to be simple and easy to differentiate. So then what your kids are going to do is they're just going to dump out their coins they are going to count the value and then write the value next to the matching letter on their recording sheet. So this was egg A. So then they would write the value for egg A in box A and so on. So this is another really fun way that you can incorporate manipulatives and it doesn't necessarily have to be money. You could use dominoes. Put a domino inside of an Easter egg. When they open it up, they have to find the sum. They have to create a fat family using the numbers on the dominoes. They have to multiply. There are so many options that you can do just by placing a simple manipulative inside of an Easter egg. And number three is to create matching games. I love this because you can basically do this with any math concept in any grade level. So let's take a look at some ideas. So if you teach little learners, so maybe first grade or even kindergarten, you can create supatizing matching activities using Easter eggs. So on one half of the egg, you are going to draw dots. Maybe you want to draw tally marks. You can use stickers, whatever, you know, whatever you would like to do. And then on the other half, you're going to write the matching number and then they have to match the picture with the number. Another fun way is to have matching place value eggs. So you can do this with two digit numbers, three digit numbers, four digit numbers, you name it. So on one half of the egg, I drew out a number in base 10 blocks. On the other half, I have the number in number form. Kids have to mix up all the pieces and then they have to find the matching parts of the egg. Then another example is for fractions. So you could create a set where kids have to match the equivalent fraction. You can write different fractions on each of the pieces and then they have to find the matching equivalent and pair them together. So as you can see, you can create all kinds of matching games just by using Easter eggs. I used a permanent marker and sometimes if you want, you can, if you want them to last and for the marker to not come off, you can coat the writing with clear fingernail polish. Another thing you can do is use a clear piece of tape and then place the tape on the egg and then write on the piece of tape so that your writing will not come off. Another fun activity that you can do with Easter eggs is to have them create a graph. So grab some of those Easter eggs, throw them into a basket. Maybe you have five best baskets set up for a math center and they're labeled one, two, and three. 
and then in each basket you have a different amount of eggs with different colors and then so then you can use a plain graph just like this one which I'm going to show you how to get in that free download and so then they can graph their eggs based on the color they can create a tally chart and then create a bar graph down at the bottom that represents the data from the eggs in their basket based on the colors. And then the questions, they're pretty generic. So it, they can be answered no matter how many colors or how many there are in the basket. So I've provided in the printable, I'm gonna show you how to get, you can get, there's two options available. One where the scale on the graph is counting by ones, and then you are going to get this one where the scale of the graph is counting by twos. And so this is good for your higher level kids where they can get practice by answering questions about the data with graphs on a scale other than one. And then the fifth activity that I am going to share is you can actually create a math fact wheel using Easter eggs. So what you're gonna do is on one half of the Easter egg, you're going to write the number that you want them to practice adding. So it's just gonna be a single number. It can be anything. Then on the other half of the wheel, you are going to write plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, and so on, all the way around the egg so that when they're connected, so then when the pieces are put together, it's going to create multiple math facts using blank plus six. So they can say three plus six equals nine, and then they can twist it. Two plus six equals eight. Eight plus six equals 14. Six plus six equals 12. 5 plus 6 equals 11, and so forth. So you can have them create a math fact, and maybe they have to solve using manipulatives. Maybe they're building out 2 plus 6 on a 10 frame. Maybe they are having to draw a picture, or maybe you just have them create a math fact. They have to rewrite that math fact on a recording sheet or on a whiteboard, and then they have to solve for the sum. So there you have it. There are five simple, fun games that you can incorporate into your learning in the spring months using Easter eggs. And as I promised, I told you that I do have a fun freebie for you. So you're gonna wanna head on over to my website. I've put the link in the description of this video and it's gonna take you to a blog post. Now inside that blog post, I'm actually going to be sharing a lot more ideas that you can use with Easter eggs to teach math than just the five that I share here. So you're gonna wanna head on over and check that out because there are lots of other activities that I did not share in this video. And so then you are gonna scroll down and you are going to see a little box that you can type in your name and your email address. I do recommend using your personal email address over your school one simply because sometimes school spam filters can block these types of things. So what you're gonna do, put in your name, your email address, and it is going to send you the file. So in that file, you are going to get these telling time task cards. There is a set for hour and half hour, telling time in five minute increments, and telling time in one minute increments. So you're getting three sets of telling time task cards. Then you're gonna get these blank generic recording sheets. You're going to get um, a set with numbers and with letters. Set one has 16 boxes, set two has 20 boxes. And then you're also going to get the graphing recording sheet. So you're gonna get two different graph activities. So click that link in the description of this video and head on over, check out that blog post and then sign up to have that freebie sent straight to your inbox. If you have a fun out of the box activity that you do with your kids involving Easter eggs, I would love to know. So leave me a comment and I hope you guys have a blessed one and I will see you in the next video. Bye.